we also have some simple demos that's uh, uh, that has um, you know um, that can show what working. You know, let me see if I can if I can share my screen. You know, um, maybe just for a minute. You know. Oh, okay, it can't. But um, you know, but that's fine. So you know, there's um, if you go to the um, uh, uh, Twitter was a match account, you know, it's uh, at real was a match. Um, the, the, um, there's a recent tweet about that's, that is fairly popular. You know, that's, uh, you know, there's a hundred likes, more than a hundred likes. And, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, um, you talk about WAP, you know, that's, uh, um, so there, um, so we have a very simple application. We, you know, we, um, you, you know, I, I got to try the file system issue next, but, um, you know, uh, the simple application is basically it does echo and, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, um, um, you know, some simple logic to, to, uh, to process the, the, the incoming request and then send it back. Right. And, uh, um, you know, one of the most interesting thing that we see is that this entire WASM container or WASM image is only is less than one megabyte, less than one megabyte. You know, it's uh, it's like 900 K, something like that. And it's not really not heavily optimized. And, uh, um, you know, so, but if you look at, um, you know, a very typical, say, um, you know, Linux container based web server, like NGX, NGX, it's, um, you know, the smallest NGX um, container image I can I can find is 16 megabytes, right? You know, that's NGX built on RPI. And, uh, um, you know, but for, for most people, if they want to use like NGX or Ubuntu, you know, things like that, that is easily 50 megabytes, you know? So, um, you know, that's, I I think that's why it's resonated with people, right? You know, it's uh, because um, with Wasm, you can make it uh, more secure, because it doesn't have Linux, right? It's uh, it's much much smaller, and uh, it started much faster, and you know, so you know the the usual benefits that we have, you know that uh, that that we talk about about Wasm. So yeah, that's uh, um, you know, um, we'd love to see more progress in this. You know, that's uh, um, yeah. So um, thank you very much, Alan. You know, that's uh, um, you know, that's um, we we love to support your project, and hope, hope um, you know, um, and. Love to see see you in our community as well. Yeah, thanks. So, so yeah, let's um, then let's move. Um, you know, let's leave all the questions to the uh, towards the end of the um, towards the end of the session. So let's move move on to the next topic. Um, um, so Vincent, are you ready to talk about um, container D and Ron Wazi? Yes, yes. So yes. Okay. I share my screen. Okay. Um, body here. Yes, I can see it. Yo, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I was be sorry. Make sure everyone to understand what I say. Um, so let's begin. Uh, yeah. This is my personal, my company mail. So it's very interesting to write mail to me. I can answer your question in my mail. Yeah. So today I bring good news about Ron Wasi. Yeah. Our Wasi and Ron Kai is already merged into official repository. Yeah. So right now you can both use our stream in those these two repository. Yeah. So it's why here I prepared these three topics about first one. What is different between them? I think there are so many users will confuse which one you should use and uh, like this topic you use which one. So I will explain which version I will use. And the second topic, I will share my view a roadmap or position about you, the two repository. Yeah. The final topic. I will do a simple demo, show some how to use Novasi build from container D repository. Yeah. So take, take a look. First one, this is a simple table. Of course, they both container T compatible. So if we run CTR command, they both work fine. Yeah, both the container the repository or ours. Yeah. But uh, in my testing, I think the official repository is not Docker compatible. 
by means some error message to your power control group permission denied. So I also not putting this feature into our cluster in here. Yeah. And uh, currently the next version, the container D support Rust to attribute OCI image without use Docker. So we also surprise the feature too. Yeah. And uh, in this one, we add more in our repository, we including more demo case, uh, those coming uh, including in official repository. Final one is what's the other feature. As you can see here, the comment is different between container D and our repository because our MIG file has some difference. Uh, when our MIG file will accept the feature flag here. So if you want make view, you can specify this feature flag was the age. They will pass this argument to cargo view command. So in here, the container D will build what certain kind and what the edge string together. If we wrong make a build, they will build boards. And then install, we also supply the break, but they both they are not accept this. Yeah. The final one is if we wrong demo command, the command are the same, no different. Yeah. Here in some table, you can check the I will pass my URL into the channel. You can check the data. Yeah. The next one is the roadmap in my personal view. I think in here, there are two repository and our uh, one edge feature is merging to contain the repository. And uh, because it's not Docker compatible, so I think Maybe in the future, that compatible here, the dark desktop reason I will use this branch and uh, we will keep on the developer here. And uh, if we, we are, new feature is stable, we will also contribute it to upstream. But right now, I think we are very early stage in here. So the dark desktop this I use our branch as they are building was a machine. <laughs> And uh, our visual developer also on this slide. Yeah. I think maybe after this milestone, our functionality will more clear. Yeah. Uh, next one is I will do some demo case, show how to run, run us in face of container D repository. Yeah. Yeah. Here is an official cluster. Yeah. Uh, the key point is the usual. Yes. Uh, I can make a more step and more. Yeah. Actually, there are no much different between our cluster and the official cluster. Yeah. I just do a simple demo case here. And then this image is built from create not Docker. And then you can see we will build also as you shown here. And uh, This is what's in tension. When you use the official repository, they both will build at the same time. And they can store them. And uh, if you want to run a demo case, you just run like that. Yeah. They are very simple, like before. Yeah. Just then tell them everybody can use our official release uh, on the official repository. Yeah. No, no. So my topic and
Michael. All right. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Benson. Yeah, that's um, um, you know, I think um, you know, um having Ron Wars merged back into um container D is one of the um big milestones for us, really, you know, because uh, so many people use container D. You know, um now in the um Kubernetes ecosystem, we at least have two ways to integrate um was match. You know, we can use uh, if you are uh, if you are in a uh, OpenShift or Red Hat ecosystem, you can use CRA, right? You know, that's uh, um, you know, that's the way we have talked about before. Um, you know, so um, Fedora, OpenShift, CRA, Podman. You know, I have tried Podman to use Podman to pull the uh, image built by Docker slash container D and uh, um, and published to the uh, to Docker Hub. You know, that's they're completely interoperable. Meaning that's you know uh, you can build images with Docker and Kubernetes and pull that with Podman and run it with Zero. So you know that's uh, so that's um, I think that's uh, very interesting because that allows the the tools and the, the um, you know the development tools and, de and deployment tools to work together. You know that's it doesn't matter which tools you use to build those images. You can use um, um, you know another tool to pull it and run it right. And uh, um, I think it's um, um, it's really important for the community for um, for um, going forward, for Ron Wazi to support, uh, you know, Wazi Magic extensions, you know, plugins, right? You know, that's uh, so that we can um, easily get, because not only we have uh, Wazi and, and a lot, of, um, we have a lot of use cases around AI, which you know, um, which we would see soon in our uh, in our F RFX mentorship topics, and we also have a lot of um, uh, enhancements that come in for the Wazi socket. So, for instance. You know, um, today, you know, the wasm edge sockets is, is is primarily different from from the what uh, you know regular wasi socket because it's it's non-blocking. You know, it's asynchronous, so that's why we can use Tokyo. You know, that's uh, you know, um, and a bunch of other frameworks that's um, to use it. However, you know, as we are adding, uh, say, HTTPS support in wasi socket, you know, and we already have DNS support. We can also have other protocols like uh, like um, you know uh, web sockets. You know, those long-running connections. Um, you know, long TCP connections and also, um, you know, MQTT and other protocols. We can build those into this at the socket level. So with all those, I think it's, uh, you know, um, it opens up a lot of use cases that people are interested. In. So yeah, that's uh, um, uh, overall, we, um, you know, we are, um, you know, um, you know, uh, very happy. That's, uh, that's um, you know, uh, the work that have been done with Ron Wazi and also the, you know, um, to, to merge it back into container D. So, yeah. Okay, so, you know, um, let me, so let's go to the um, um, last topic and uh, see if I can, um, if I can share my screen now. Hmm. I believe so, okay. So, all right. Yeah, so um, here's my screen. You know, so if you go to Wasmage, the Wasmage project, and uh, um, open up our issues, and then filter on LFX mentorship, you can see the past mentorship topics and the upcoming mentorship topics that um, that we have, uh, you know, that we have submitted, and all of them, I think, all the past mentorship topics has has people working on them. You can see their progress as well. So um, for for this round, you know, um, we have um, four of them. You know, they all opened in three weeks ago to to one week ago, and uh, um, I'll talk about two of them, and I'll ask Haidai to talk about the, the, the other two. You know, um, so um, but let me give a little background of what this mentorship is about. You know, um, so the idea really is that um, uh, the Linux Foundation and the CNCF wants to um, foster. Uh, student participation or community participation into their open source projects, and uh, um, was a match being one of their projects, so so we're eligible for that. And uh, what Linux Foundation does is that they put up um, um, a stipend, you know, that's so they pay the interns. Um, so the idea is that um, the interns work on this for three months, and uh, you get paid a market salary based on where you are. So I believe in the United States is uh, it's six thousand six hundred dollars, you know, something like that. And uh, um, so it's not it's not Google intern level, but you know it's <laughs> but you know 
but it's pretty good. You know, that's uh, um, so um, um, and to work on to contribute to open source for 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 three months. And I think, you know, um, from my experience, it is um, far far better than say have an internship in a tech company or in at Google. So for instance, if you are, say if you have an internship at Google, you know, uh, you do get paid a little bit more. You no, know, not not you know not by a whole lot anymore, but you have to go there and uh, you have nothing to show after that because all the work you have done in there is confidential. You know, there's uh, nobody sees what you have done in there and uh, um, and you don't know how the work is uh, is being used after you left, right? So contributing to open source, um, I think for, for, for a younger person is, um, at least that's how I started my career. You know, um, I keep telling people, you know, I'm, as many people know I have a PhD in physics and uh you know um why i want to become a programmer you know all those years ago um you know i started with contributing to open source and uh you know and since then you know that has been um you know i think the only consistent way in tech to build up your your resume and your profile unless you do something really significant in a big company otherwise your contribution in a big company is all invisible right so you know that's um so that's um you know i think this um you know, we are very, um, you know, I'm grateful that Linux Foundation put, um, you know, uh, put out those opportunities for, um, for the community and also for the projects, right? So um, then for, um, for every year, there's two rounds of uh, FX mentorship opportunities. And uh, so this is for, um, I think, March to May. And we have uh, four topics that are currently accepting applications. Um, in order to apply, um, um, we have a, um, because there's would be numerous people apply for the same, uh, for the, for the same projects, right? You know, we, uh, we have a pretest, so it's all, dis um, it's all discussed in the, in the, in the issue. So, um, so, uh, the applicants would have to, um, perform some basic tasks to, um, you know, to show that he, um, he or she understands, you know, um, what it takes, you know, that's, uh, and has the necessary skills, for instance. If the project requires C++, C++ skills, that uh, we would like this uh, the applicant to at least understand or know how to program in C++, right? So um, and Rust and so on. So you know that's a uh, um, you know that's the purpose of the pretest. And so you finish a, a pretest, and then um, I think the deadline for the pretest is uh, mid February. So I think February twentieth. I think the deadline. And uh, um, so you submit the result of the pretest in uh, in our discussion forums, and after that um, we would um, um, select based um, you know select one person for each uh, for each topic, and you can uh, we would select only one a different person for each topic. So so you know there will be four interns, and for people who successfully completed the pre uh, the pretest but not selected for the internship topics, um, we'd also love to. Um, to work with you to see if there's other um, subjects in our in our community that may need your help, right? You know, that's we could find other um, opportunities for you, and also um, maybe engage you for you know for different tasks. So you know, so it's uh, so it would not be a waste of time. You know, that's uh, um, I would say um, with fairly you know for large open source projects um, in today's job market. They only recruit, you know. They only recruit in their community. So you know. So you know. Um, um, so to participate in the community and to demonstrate that would be, I, I think, would be um, important and and a good idea. So let me see if there's a. Oh yeah. So Alan said he wants to do a short demo. Yeah, we love to do that. And uh, so let's go over the um, mentorship topics. Quickly, and uh, then um, you know, at the end of the meeting, um, well, you've maybe five ten minutes for Alan to to do the demo. Okay, all right. So there's four topics this year, and I'll leave Haidai to talk about um, you know uh, the C plus plus and Wasm Edge internal related topics. Um, the two topics that uh, that I submitted. You know, our um, applications, building applications on top of Wasmage or integration with our Wasmage with other projects. So the first one is really um, um, related to WASN. So you know, um, as you guys know, um, WASN is the uh, uh, AI ML extension for for Wasmage. It's uh, um, 
it allows a Rust application or JavaScript application for that matter to perform AI inference on frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch and OpenVINO and you know things like that. And uh, um, we have seen a lot of people interested in that, and there's lots of very strong use cases for that. You know, um, mostly is that you know say if I write a um, you know face, facial recognition application or you know natural language processing as very popular today, right? You know that's uh, um, I write that application. You know the typical use case, the typical workflow is that I write that application in Python and then deploy it in the container, right? Um, for that, I think you are easily looking at the footprint of one gigabytes or more, you know, because of you know uh, the dependencies of Python and all that stuff, right? Um, so with however with Wasm and you can write it in Rust or write it in JavaScript, and uh, um, and use the Rust API to call TensorFlow or to Py PyTorch. You know, it's the same function. It's just um, plugging different backends. And uh, um, um, once you do that, um, the, the total application size gets reduced to um, the runtime itself, um, you know, has, uh, has TensorFlow libraries would be 20 megabytes, you know, something of that nature. But uh, the container image becomes what we have just seen, you know, less than one megabytes, you know, to, um, you know, it's, it's Couple hundred kilobytes, you know. That's uh, um, if you put the the model in it, because sometimes the model is big. You are you are still looking at a couple of megabytes. So you know that's a that's the power of uh, Wasi and it's provide a new way, a new container to run uh, AI and machine learning applications, and it's reduce the time, um, you know, um, the the footprint by you know at least ninety percent, sometimes ninety nine percent, right? Um, so um, However, one of the issues um, with Wasi, uh, you know, with Wasi uh, is is that provides the um, APIs, provides the functions to do the inference, but that doesn't have a um, post processing API that is um, as rich as Python. So, for instance, if you do an image recognition with um, with Wasi uh, and PyTorch, um, you're gonna get the tensor output back. The tensor output is you know all those boundary boxes that tells you the possible regions on that image that it has detected. You know, um, 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 it has detections. For instance, if you ask for detecting detecting humans, right? You know, detecting objects, detecting faces, it would give you um, a lot of you know um, um, boxes that are that the the uh, the model thinks that potentially contains image in that uh, contains a face in that image. And uh, um, it is necessary because you can never do detection with 100% certainty, right? You know, uh, in Python, um, once you get this data back, you need to do some post-processing. You need to figure out which box um, has the highest probability, or can you merge those boxes together to, um, you know, uh, to be, um, to have some confidence that a uh, face is, con um, you know, is present in, in part of the image. You need to do some post-processing. Um, there's well no algorithms to do that, but they are all implemented in Python. And uh, um, then you know, um, you, then you can use another Python library to draw boxes and you know things like that to the original image so that it can be presented back to the user. So um, because machine learning in Python has evolved for you know at least 10, 15 years now, so there's a rich set of libraries that does that. But um, you know, um, in Rust and in JavaScript, there's much less. Um, you know, um, you know, I would say helper functions or you know this type of utility functions are available. So, um, um, but but from our end, you know, in order for in order for um, machine learning or AI to be to be um, you know to be truly um, useful in um, in Wasi and in Wasm Edge, we need to build those functions, and this is part of the effort. So we take a very popular library, um, you know, um, AI machine learning mod. What's it called? Model Zoo, model library from from Google. It's called the Media Pipe. It has um, you know um, different type of you know um, computer vision and you know natural language processing you know models like that, and it has really good documentation in terms of what the model does, what's the output, and you know things like that. how to do that in Python. And uh, um, so um, our idea is really to uh, to uh, build enough uh, helper functions in Rust. Um, because once we have it in Rust, we can easily do that in JavaScript as well, you know, to build enough helper functions in Rust so that 
all those state, uh, all those models can run in WASM was edge, WASM ALN, right? You know, so that, you know, and once, um, you know, um, because there's lots of use cases for those models. Those models can be um, run edge devices and run a data pipeline, you know, and, you know, things like that. So that allows us to, um, you know, to, to build, uh, you know, to build those um, uh, AI and ML applications using uh, using Wasi and uh, Wasm Edge, and uh, have uh, and uh, would immediately have a, a set of you know very popular models to work with, and we would know for certain that those models can we can generate useful uh, outputs from those models. So that's the idea. You know, that's uh, um, basically we want um, you know we need the users to be um, to have familiarity with. C language like um, C, Go, or Java, and then you know uh, if you are learning Rust, that's fine. But um, you know that's uh, but um, the work will eventually be done uh, in Rust. So that's the first project. You know um, um, the to build uh, a Rust library for 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 media pipe models, so that we can uh, you know um, essentially provide those um, those um, helper functions that that's that's available in Python. Yeah, that's the first one. And then the second one I want to talk about is streaming data processing with water match. So there's a Apache called, project called uh, Fluwheel. You know, um, you can think of it sort of like, um, you know, uh, Flink, you know, so it is uh, processing data in the pipeline. So the data pipeline could come from Kafka or, you know, uh, Redis, you know, or, or any sources. And you plug this um, framework on, into that uh, data stream. And, you, um, you know, you can process the data as, uh, um, you know, as the message come in, right? You know, so, so it provides computing framework for that. Uh, it's written in Rust, so that's why it's popular. And, uh, um, you know, and, and uh, so, um, one of the goals for it is um, it wants to use Wasm to to um, to support those um, those processing functions. So users write those pro um, processing functions, in, um, you know, and compile them into Wasm, and then um, you know um, uh, the the full wheel platform, you know, or the open source project that 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 you set up would take those Wasm functions as the serverless functions, and then run them, apply them to a data pipeline, right? And one of the, um, um, you know, so they initially integrated with Wasm, uh, with Wasm Time. And uh, this is actually one of the, um, you know, uh, when Wasm Time reached 1.0, this is one of the um, poster child or one of the important projects that, it, that, that they talk about. You know, so, um, um, you know, but now, you know, as the integration with Wasm Time is done, now they have customers and all that, they are looking to expand their, um, their, the scope of their open source project, and at the same time, we also want to expand ours. So um, we talk to um, you know, um, and so there's mutual interest in there, because you know when you talk about data um, processing data in the pipeline, there's some very unique features in Wasm Edge that you can use. So for instance, Wasm Edge supports high performance networking. So sometimes, you know, in the data pipeline, you need to look up another web service, right? You know, that's uh, um, you know, there are lots of cases like that. Where you know um, the incoming data, you need to interpret that by looking up by by calling another service. So Wasm Edge would make it very easy to do. And the other one is Media Pipe, right? You know that's uh, so um, the incoming data may be um, um, text in natural language or image that you captured from a camera. You know that's to apply an AI machine learning model to it and generate some um, some some results. And uh, uh, for the um, for the next step in the stream, for the next step in the flow, right? That's would also be very important. And those are the features, those are the tasks that, that Wasm, um, Wasm Edge can do very well. So um, so the idea really is to incorporate Wasm Edge into the into Flow well as well. You know, so um, um, we have done similar tasks numerous times in the past. You know, um, it's so for instance, we have done it for for the ESA projects. So that's that is um you know, um, it's um, under Open Atom Foundation. And also we have done it for uh, Polkadot, which is one of the biggest, um, you know, uh, blockchain projects, you know, um, is to provide um, a compile time switch so that people, um, in, in the lesser, <laughs> in some extent, Ron Wazi and C-Ron, it's the same idea, you know, is to, um, 
the host projects needs access to both wasm time and wasm edge so we provide a switch either at the runtime or at compile time in this in this case we're thinking about compile time and uh, um, and then provide a way for the um for the um um, for the user of that framework, in this case, Flow Wheel, to uh, to specify which runtime they want to use, and then you know we would route all the um, function calls through that uh, through that runtime, and uh, um, we um, through this project we would probably like to build, um, although it's not a um, you know it's a it's a I I think it's a goal we we would like to reach, but it's not absolutely necessary. To provide an abstraction layer between what um, you know across different wasm runtimes so that in the future when we do things like that we have a we have a common set of crates right you know that's a, so just to write you know just to write um, um, against that uh, specification do not write specifically against wasm time or wasm edge and if you write um you know against that abstract middle layer crate uh, we can automatically plug in wasm time or wasm edge at the back end you know so we uh, we would like to reach to that point but uh, it may may or may not be necessary or may or may not be possible uh, within the three months of the um with the uh, um with the internship so yeah that's um so that's the second project which i also find very interesting and it has a it has a it has a broad scope that's you know um you know and for the immediate goal we want to integrate into flow wheel but you know um for the future, there's a lot more to do, you know, um, with that related topic. So yeah, that's uh, um, those are the two topics that I want to talk about. So uh, had I do want to talk about the two um, C C plus plus or the um, was a major internal, um, you know, related topics? Uh, yes, um, because I'm not use my computer, so uh, can you keep sharing your screen? Yes, yes, yes. So which so one? So let's it? go the uh, Unify was an edge tools first. Okay. Uh, yeah, this one. Yes. Okay. So let me do a very short introduction. Uh, actually, in our current release, as I said, uh, you can find that there are lots of the Watson Edge related tools, including our uh, runtime itself called the Watson Edge command. And also, you can find our compiler is a, you know, is a, is an edge chart. A tool called the Watson Edge C, which uh, represents the Watson Edge compiler, and we still have lots of you know some unreleased tool which is uh, still uh, under development. Uh, so the sign verify part is for the Watson signature, and the test is for the you know just run the uh, Watson Edge test for to doing uh, for example the WAST file, some what file or something. However, um, because shipping, you know, more and more uh, different name uh, will make users more, you know, ambiguous to, uh, they have no idea how to use them or uh, what is the difference between those tools. So uh, in this issue, we want to create, you know, a unified Watson Edge tool, which is just called the Watson Edge. So, uh all of the you know above command will become a sub command in the new tool uh, for example if we want to run a wasm application uh in the previous stage you need to you know call the wasm edge um x dot wasm and just execute it and now you can still keep the you know keep the rule or add a new uh, sub command called run okay then the wasm edge c will uh, become the Watson Edge compile, and you know, there's uh, lots of new tools will uh, keep the same, you know, naming style. So in this issue, you know, we need to reorg our current uh, tools section to do this. Yeah. So to uh, achieve this issue, uh, I, I believe you have need to know. Uh, how the Watson Edge interactive with its internal component, and you will need to merge two different tools into just one. Okay, so this is the first one that we uh, provide in this uh, LFX membership uh, for uh, from our side. So let's go to the second one. All right. Uh, uh, Watson Edge C plus plus SDK. So, Michael, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, so uh, in the previous release, we have provided the CSDK, which is the uh, pure C uh, coding style and libraries 
uh, for the developers. However, uh, you know, uh, in our previous design, we think that the C++ developers can use the, you know, use the external C uh, notation to interact with our C SDK uh, just for the, you know, for the temporary solution. However, we now want to, you know, uh, create a new uh, C++ SDK, which is, you know, just serve the uh, C++ first, not from C, but from the, uh, you know, from the view of the C++. Just like we have the What's Edge Go, we have the What's Edge Rust, we have the, uh, you know, What's Edge Java binding and uh, 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 Python binding. So, um, in this issue, we, we we will need to you know we will need to create a new uh, new bindings for the C plus plus. However, we know that uh, to provide all of the features in what's energy uh, bindings is not uh, it will take too much time in this limited period. So uh, in this issue, we will only limited to part. Uh, of this stage, which is the basic functions. Uh, for example, you can uh, look up the version of the what's edge, or you can set the uh, label of the login tools. And also we want to uh, handle the uh, virtual machine part here. So you can let users to register their uh, what's an application and execute it. And if everything is so far so good, we will extend this, you know, this, uh, uh, bindings to more uh, features. So if you want to, you know, if you want to uh, finish these issues, you may need to survey the what's energy C SDK to know how we wrap our uh, our internal data structures into uh, other languages. And uh, maybe you can get some idea from the proposal called the Watson C++ API, which is the Watson proposal. and um, uh, it, it is already out there, so you, you can find that there are some new uh, Watson proposal uh, is not supported by this one. However, you can still inspired by the design or by the you know by the uh, uh, design decisions. Uh, this proposal already discussed before. So uh, this is the second one from my side. So let's. Oh, I think. Thank you, Michael. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Haidai. Yeah. That's. Uh, um, I just want to add. You know, this. Um, all those proposals are not. Um, you know, um, abstract or nice to have projects. You know, they are. Um, they can be put into immediate use. For instance, you know, um, we have people who have been asking for C plus plus SDK from us for quite some time now because you know, um, what as you know, what image is written in C plus plus. And um, you know, um, but mostly our we, we currently only mostly offer um, um, uh, SDKs in other languages, right? You know, in, in Rust and others. So there's several C++ based projects that are, um, you know, uh, that has very specifically asked us to uh, to build this. And uh, um, so, you know, um, but, you know, we we don't have a lot of internal resources to take, um, to do all those, um, to do all those tasks, you know, that's, that's community wants, you know, so, you know, um, I think, um, if you are interested in working on that, we'd love to see your application because that's something that's um, you know that's once built that can be immediately used by um, some of the I, I think well-known projects. That's uh, that's um, that you know so that's so it would have immediate impact. Yeah. Um, so um, well, so I think. We have like eight minutes left, so uh, I'd like to give the opportunity for Alan to do uh, to do his demo. You know the the Bob demo because I think it's important. And after that, we're gonna uh, at least Haida and I, uh, maybe with them as well. We will uh, we will stay in this call um, for as long as um, it takes for if anyone has questions or if you have questions about the um, you know the the mentorship um, program, you can uh, you can ask them now in the chat. So that um, you know, so that uh, after Alan's demonstration, we can answer those questions. Yeah. I I don't know why my this uh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll share yeah. okay uh yeah so basically I have uh, uh this one is a static directory 
and then uh, you can see uh, the directory can be uh, yeah, so 8080 and yeah, another page is all coming from here. So uh, the script is actually uh, writing the, uh, setting the environment variable port and then um, uh, setting the environment variable dir and yeah, it's quite, I mean, you, uh, you can't really compare to the, the others, like more production. It's not really very production really. I think you, you probably put this in CDN is better. La. But let's say if you want to do a quick rip up, then I think it's still okay. Uh, then I'll just demo another one is the this um the baby walk. So uh here I have some I made some yeah think, yeah so I have uh uh start some um uh weather age some game logic and then yeah because it, it, it cannot actually do concurrent so I, I do spawn a like a, a thread uh with a time interval to ping at this uh game logic yeah so it's quite unfortunate i think it, it, hopefully in the future it supports uh multi thread then uh this is not required so i do uh, do a surf and then uh yeah i do some peer la, because uh uh do this that means uh, messaging just bypass the game server uh i mean you try to achieve a better performance uh, yeah, actually, uh, I hope it works. <laughs> yeah, so actually, it, it looks, uh, see whether if I can, let's say if I click and move, yeah, it, it moves and uh, you can roughly uh, build a game from this. Yeah, so basically, the, the, uh, there's a, the game server, game logic actually also has the ECS uh, behind it. And then if somebody join and you will, you will roughly see uh, the, the game state. Yeah, so actually this one, I'll just put the, it's, op, it's open source, uh, this example. So, uh, oops, yeah. I'll just put, hey, where's the link? Uh, yeah, I'll just put the eh, link. Yeah, I'll just put the link inside the, the chat. Lah. Yeah, so then, oh, yeah, then that's it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Thank you. So, so you know, um, so the work with Barry is there any hope of it getting upstream to Barry? Uh, I don't know. I don't really think so because the uh that I have to uh they have to remove some code lah because uh they they do have like uh you when you write right is uh app dot build so uh that that component is a bit tricky lah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I hope they, but I don't, I don't know whether they will do that. Yeah, because Bevy, the idea is, is good is because uh, Bevy uh, supports compiling to uh, WebAssembly for the browser. So compile, making it to compile to, um, uh, for backend is, is pretty, pretty uh, uh, WebAssembly for backend is actually pretty easy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, great. Yeah, so, um, you know, um, Council, your question, that threading is something that we're working on, right? You know, that's, um, you know, um, I've talked with High Dive for, for, for numerous times, you know, there's a, uh, because in the, in the browser, encryption can generate, um, you know, um, JavaScript for you to spawn multiple VMs. So you can write C++ application, uh, multi-thread C++ applications and the pretend it can run in Wasm and, the, and the, you know, encryption would, uh, would, uh, would generate those JavaScript plumbing for you. But uh, it, all those JavaScript plumbing doesn't work in WASI. So in WASI, we need a uh, we need to do that in our SDK. You know, so that's so the CSD. Um, you know, so so it needs to be a a different way of doing that. But that's something that's that we are um, you know we are currently working on. You know, so that <laughs> you know um, um, you know you can write a WASM application. You can compile a Rust uh, multi-thread C or C plus plus or Rust application into WASM. And it would just run in WASM image. It would know to spawn another WASM image instance in the new thread, and then communicate back to the original thread. So you know that's a. But anyway, that's a. Um, you know. Um, thank you very much. That's that. That's really great. Um, you know to, um, you know, to see this work. Yeah. All right. So um, there's um, let's see. There's um, some questions. Um, Um, so the first question is: Is it possible for the um, for a project to have more than one student? 
Uh, no. So, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, each project can have one student and each student can like, participate in one project. So, you know, in database jargon, it is um, one to one relationship, you know. So it's, uh, um, but uh, however, um, as I said, you know, um, um, you know, um, this um, app applying for this um, a mentorship and completing the pretest is a strong signal of um, your ability to work with Swarth Match or and or you know the open source community in general, right? You know, so even if you do not um, necessarily get into one of those, um, you know, um, one of those projects, um, there's another set of projects that are coming up later this year, and also there's other projects that's in the um, that we would have you know, um, doing our regular course of work that we can engage you for, you know, for, you know, um, for work or for consulting or for things like that, you know, that's um, that's in the future. So, you know, that's, a, so that's the benefit of that. But, um, you know, uh, to answer that question, the, the, the student and project relationship is one to one, you know, one student per project, one project per student, okay. So Haida, maybe you can uh, you can answer the next question. You know, the mentees applying for the two C plus plus projects are expected to know the Boost library. Uh, no, they don't have to because these two issues, uh, these two issues, uh, will not use the the Boost library. Library, yeah. Uh, so, sorry, is that clear, or uh, you you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, 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 okay great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? It seems like we will be able to finish on time. <laughs> you know. It's, uh, um, you know, I know we have a lot to talk about. We have may, we may have even more next week because I think we can have a new release and a lot of new features. That's why I'm really excited to talk about it next month. Um, but as you can see from this, uh, from those um, uh, mentorship opportunities, there's a variety of things going on at WASMATCH, you know, so if you're interested in contributing, you know, um, either as an open source developer or engaging us with some, type of, you know, uh, consulting or contracting relationship, you know, we'd love to hear from you. You know, that's, uh, um, you know, there's so much to do. Um, there's so many use cases. That's uh, because, you know, people are really interested in in, in everything Wasm related these days. So, you know, yeah, that's, uh, um, yeah. So um, if there's no more questions or if you have other questions, that's, um, you, you know, that's um, come to our, um, you know, there's four, those four issues. We have seen those four issues, right? You know, that's um, leave a message, you know, ask us, you know, where to find us, you know, that's, uh, yeah. So any other questions? If if there's none, we can conclude this meeting. Yeah. Oh, there's another question. Um, would there be any official step up completing the pretest? Yes. Um, well, there's nothing you need to do on your end, you know, um, I know you have some, um, you, you know, um, I, I know you have completed a pretest. So there's nothing to do on your end at this moment. What we would do is to wait for other people to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to finish the pretest if there's any uh, before the deadline, and uh, um, and then we would um, um, make a selection. And after that, um, you know, um, you will be formally notified. You know, to um, you know um, um, the status of the projects and uh, and and what's the next step to work on. Yeah. Thank you very much for um for everyone to um you know um to come to our meetings and uh, um you know um I I do hope to see you in the community and definitely see you in the in the um in March you know when we have um you know um more progress to share by then thank you and uh, good luck with uh with uh, um, mentorship applications.